not only did people not have UCLA in their Final Four, people didn't even have them winning their first four game against Michigan State, me included, which goes to show that their run to the Final Four has been unbelievable to say the least. Um, massive respect to the Bruins and what they're doing. Um, I mean, it's incredible. But obviously, you know, we're doing a Sweet 16 Elite Eight reaction video. Thank you guys for tuning into this ASC YouTube video. Make sure you guys are always subscribing, staying up to date, watching all the latest videos. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of March Madness content recently on the YouTube channel. So make sure you guys, you know, probably be doing a national championship reaction video or something else. I'll be doing some more NCAA content as the uh, tournament you know, concludes, but you know, a lot to cover in Sweet 16 Elite Eight, so let's get right into it. You know, the first game, or I guess first day was Saturday, March 27th, Oregon State, Leo, Chicago, so I'll be starting there. Then uh, at the end, I'll kind of give my quick Final Four reaction or uh, predictions, but for now, let's do some reactions because it was a crazy, crazy Sweet 16 in Elite Eight. March is here, and with the madness that has already begun, it's time for you to shoot your shot and score big with the nonstop action with MyBookie. Select the winners from many tournament games in the MyBookie Bracket Contest for a chance at $10,000 in cash prizes, and it's only a dollar to enter. It doesn't matter whether you're filling out multiple brackets, betting the national championship winner, or simply looking for player and game props. MyBookie has you covered. Sign up today at mybookie.ag and use promo code ASC to secure a deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code ASC to secure your first deposit bonus. College ball, NBA, NHL, no matter the sport, no matter the minute, from tip-off to buzzer, MyBookie puts the action in your hands with its in-game live betting. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. All right, so Oregon State, Loyola, Chicago. I loved this Leo Chicago team. Um, I think I said in the last video, I really thought that they were a national championship contender team. I mean, what they did to Illinois was unbelievable. And I asked this question to many people. Did this game against Oregon State prove almost how good Oregon State was? Or did it prove how bad Illinois was? Because Leo Chicago obviously demolished Illinois then Oregon State beat them by seven points and I don't really think there's a sole answer I think the sole answer is it's March and that anything can happen um, but we'll talk about this game because Leo Chicago a lot of people you know I think a good amount of people had Leo Chicago winning this game but I saw a few people think that the Beavers were going to win this game a lot of people were you know some people were saying Oregon State money line and I didn't understand that because there was no reason for me to believe that Leola was going to lose that game, but, you know, offensively, both teams cannot do anything to start the game, especially Oregon State. Leola Chicago kind of got off to a little bit of a lead, um, and then it quickly faded away. Then ultimately, at the end, it was 65-58, but the second half, I mean, Oregon State was pretty much dominating this game, so... I mean, I won't spend too much time on this because I'll be talking more about Oregon State in their Elite Eight game, but massive respect to Oregon State for pulling off this upset. And Leo Chicago, I mean, I don't really know what happened. It's obviously, I think if they play seven games, there's a good chance they won a four out of seven series. And obviously you can see that for loads of team in March Madness. And that's why this tournament is so fun to watch because it's only one game, but... Leo Chicago, it sucks because, you know, you had Cameron Crutwig and you had many other players on that team that, you know, I think Crutwig's the senior, so you kind of feel bad for him. But so many of those guys on the team that were just unbelievable and you kind of wish you could see them win. But massive props to Oregon State. They got the win and they're advancing to the Elite Eight. Nova Baylor. So Baylor, like, you know, for teams that won, I'll be talking about more about them in the Elite Eight, but Nova surprised me this tournament. I thought they were the, one of the most un overrated teams going into the tournament. Um, Colin Gillespie being out, I thought was going to be, and it was a pretty big, you know, it hurt them per se because we saw that in the big, um, in the uh, Big East tournament against Georgetown, and then obviously we saw that they could have used him in this game against Baylor. But Baylor is just. They're in the Final Four. Well, like I said, we'll get into that as we talk about the Elite Eight, but 
they're just an unbelievable team. And at some point, Nova, you know, they've beaten good teams to get to that point. Um, at some point, you're just going to run into a very good team. And it's, you know, we love the upsets in March Madness, but Baylor, it looks like, could win this whole thing. It's unbelievable. Um, Nova, though, and that's the thing. If you have Jay Wright as your coach, you never can rule this Nova team out. You know, and Nova wasn't necessarily a bad team, obviously. Um, we saw them in the regular season, them being the Big East champions, regular season champions, um, got many quality wins. And, you know, going into the season, they were, I think, the third best team in the country. Um, so what a bit of a disappointing year for them. But to get to the Sweet 16, um, massive props to them. And uh, Jay Wright is obviously going to be, you know, like I, like I said, when he's your head coach, you're going to be in ball games. You're going to be uh, doing well. All right, this is the game I'm so excited to talk about, Arkansas or Roberts, because no one was cheering for Arkansas this game unless you're from Arkansas or you went to University of Arkansas. But Oral Roberts, you got to respect the fight that they put up. I mean, Oral Roberts got through the first two rounds. They beat Florida and they beat Ohio State, and they run into an Arkansas squad that I've talked about many times on the uh, March Madness prediction videos going into the tournament. I said this Arkansas squad, a lot of people think they are, uh, you know, and even when we saw that against Colgate, people thought that Colgate was going to upset Arkansas. I said, no, this is one of the best Arkansas squads we've seen since they were extremely dominant in the 90s and earlier before that. Um, and, you know, Arkansas is super legit. I'll talk about them in the Elite Eight. Um, but or Roberts offensively this team is just absurd i don't know how they were a 15 seed um it blows my mind because like i said they're one of the best offensive teams in the country and they're a 15 seed and you know we see what they can do from you know beyond the perimeter we see what they can do inside there's loads of ways that this or roberts squad can score and my goodness i really thought that that last shot was going to go in for or roberts and, you know the buzzer beater chance and it just rolled out um almost got the win but arkansas is a very good squad and people got to understand that and i think they did after this game um and you know not going to the final four but going to the lead eight massive props to them syracuse and houston um i placed a bet on syracuse before this game and it was obviously not the right one uh houston they're good I think I will talk about Houston when we get to the Final Four predictions. They are a national championship contender. Obviously, if you get to the Final Four, you're a national championship contender. But a lot of people weren't sold on this Houston team, and I even raised some concerns. I said the losses they faced in the regular season, Cincinnati and East Carolina specifically, were bad losses. The Wichita State one was understandable, but this Houston team... They only lost three games in the regular season. We, I should have understood that. And I love this Houston squad. Quentin Grimes has been balling. And loads of other players in that Houston squad and the Cuter squad have been balling as well. And I guess I should have recognized that earlier. The Syracuse squad, Buddy Beheim, and just did not play well this game. Loads of other guards. They couldn't get their three-point shooting going. Um, which, you know... Obviously, when your team and Jim Beheim alluded to this, he said, you know, beginning of the year, we've always played this kind of style of basketball. You know, we've always let our guys be free and shoot the ball from beyond the arc. Um, but we've just seen recently, especially in conference play in the ACC tournament, but more specifically, the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament where their shots would start to fall. Um, and, you know, you kind of when you rely on shooting and you have a bad shooting night, the chances of you winning is, you know, not good um they kind of kept it close in the first half and even in the second half like the first half of the second half they were keeping it kind of competitive then houston just ran away with the game they're extremely well coached um the, we know what they can do on the defensive side of the ball they have scores houston are fun um we'll talk about them in the elite eight but you know that's kind of what i have to say about that game creighton gonzaga Marcus Zagorowski is really the only person that was doing, creating any justice in this game because Gonzaga, we know what they can do with Jalen Suggs, Drew Timmy, and Corey Kisper. There, there's loads of guys who can score on Gonzaga. Like, that's what makes them so unfair. It's because if one of those guys that I just mentioned, and that's not even just a replica of who else they have on that team, but 
and they have so many guys who can score. It's unbelievable. Um, so it's unfair. You know, Mark Few has done a great job coaching this team. Um, and, you know, for Creighton, I wasn't, well, you know how high I was on Creighton to start. Um, and then they kind of fell off a little bit. wasn't so high on them. I had them losing to California, Santa Barbara. Um, and, you know, Creighton picked up a good win against Ohio. So they had a good tournament, um, but they ran into the best team in the NCAA tournament, and that's Gonzaga. And with that, you're going to lose by 18 points. Um, so not much I'm going to else say, but Gonzaga, it's unfair when they play basketball. Pretty much what I'm going to say. Florida State, Michigan. A lot of people had Florida State and the Seminoles win this game. And I want to address this about Michigan because I think also some people were – underrating this Michigan squad heading into the tournament. And I even said it on the podcast, if you guys listen to our highlighted podcast, I was like, Michigan kind of just screams um, one of the one seats to go out early. And I, I still said, though, I think this Michigan team is so underrated. So many people are just kind of bashing them because it's Michigan. Um, they had the bad loss, um, you know, They've had bad losses in the regular season, one specifically being Illinois, um, and then in the conference play, uh, what they lose to Ohio State. So they've had losses where you kind of are like shaking your head a little bit. Uh, but Michigan was always a good team. Um, we'll talk about them in the Elite Eight. But Florida State, I was, I was not as high on Florida State as some people were. I think a lot of people had the Seminoles going to, you know, the national championship for the final four and Leonard Hamilton when he's the head coach you know he built this program up to the point where it is now and I guess it's one of those things where he obviously could have and he has the potential and this was one of his best rosters ever but when you run into Michigan I just don't see them winning um you know everyone wants to praise their defense but they let Michigan score 76 points on them which I guess isn't a whole lot but you know Michigan's defensively was great this game and Florida State really couldn't generate anything on the offensive side of the ball Michigan advances um one of the most underrated teams I'd say in the tournament and that shows in this game UCLA Alabama what a game what a game I was very certain that Alabama was going to win this game after you know people know I'm a Maryland fan after seeing what Alabama um did to Maryland from the beyond the arc I was like I mean, this team can't lose. And, you know, I said this about Syracuse. When you're a team that relies so much on perimeter shooting and three-point shots, and if they're not falling one day, then it's obviously going to be tough for your squad to win. And against UCLA, they were not they were not falling. Um, Jaden Shackleford, not to count you out or point you out or criticize you because you were unbelievable especially in the maryland game the regular season so much you could do but specifically like him he couldn't get anything going and i think it was because ucla was playing incredible defense both inside and outside the arc um to where these three-point shooters and i kind of just called out shackle for it and i guess there's other people in alabama that this applies to um but you know, they were just doing a UCLA. The Bruins were doing a great job of limiting their uh, three-point shots. And if they were shooting the three-point shot, uh, they were very contested shots. And I'm going completely blank. Nate Oates, going completely blank on Bama's head coach. But Nate Oates, you know, was saying against Bama, we want to give our guys the freedom to shoot the ball. That's how we play. I want them to shoot 30 times, 30 threes per game. And you don't see that a lot from college basketball squads. And like I said, if they're not going to fall down, in those games, then you have a bad chance of winning. So UCLA won. We'll talk about them for sure. Oregon and USC. Um, I was so high on Oregon, and it kind of sucks because USC just blew them out of the water. Evan Mobley and both the Mobley twins were just playing unbelievable this game. And I was saying this, you know, about Oregon. Oregon doesn't obviously have that true big man. Their whole starting five is six six. Um, so, you know, we saw Mobley very easily get to the rim, um, and USC was just making shots. I mean, they were just dominating on all cylinders and they were, I mean, they, Oregon had no match for this Trojan squad. Um, and some people thought that after seeing this USC performance that they could put up a fight against Gonzaga 
That's not the case because Gonzaga is the best team in the country. But I was super high on Oregon. I thought they'd win this game. And then ultimately, you know, I think I thought that Oregon was going to challenge Gonzaga in the lead eight. Um, I was wrong there. USC gets the better of those. And we've seen this Pac-12 matchup many times happen between USC and Oregon. And this was, this was probably the third time they've met, if I'm correct. Not 100% sure, but USC gets to win. Elite eight we go to. So... Yeah, lead it we go to. Oregon State, Houston. Houston was up so early. Um, and Houston's head coach. Going completely blank on his name. I am terrible with names. Uh, Kelvin Sampson. It always just kind of comes to me. Uh, Houston, you know, Kelvin Sampson was saying bef at halftime, because they were up by, what, 13 points or something like that? They were like, he was like, you know, this isn't a first half game. We got to dominate for the next 20 minutes in the second half. And we all kind of thought, eh, they're going to. Oregon State put up a fight. We got to respect the Beavers for what they did. Um, and ultimately, Houston got the better of them. They won by six. But I'm telling you, that game at the end was very close. Um, and this game, you know, sent Houston to the Final Four. Um, and it, it was honestly super close. I thought Oregon State had a good chance of pulling out the win. They just could not really make their shots. Um, as the uh, as the game progressed, the shot selection was kind of weak, um, and that ultimately led to them not winning. But Oregon State, what an unbelievable run they had! I mean, they won the Pac-12. Um, speaking, of, I think Pac-12 was dominating this tournament. We saw that with UCLA, Oregon, USC, um, and I. I'll get. I'll say this. I'll I'll keep it for when I talk about UCLA. So never mind. But Oregon State. A fair play. I thought you guys weren't even going to get out of the first round, let alone if you did. I thought that Oklahoma State would put a massacre on you guys, but Oregon State, massive props. You guys were unbelievable this season. Arkansas, Baylor. Baylor's just the best, the second best team in the country. It's Gonzaga one, but Baylor, it, they're great. Jared Butler, I mean, is he not, is he not so fun to watch? And I was talking about this with Arkansas because Arkansas kept it very close too. Um, I thought Arkansas could have won this game. I said that before the game. Um, I thought Baylor would win, but I honestly thought it'd be like a four point game. And at some points it was, um, you know, as the game was winding down, Baylor just ultimately was making shots or making their free throws. Arkansas, they weren't making their shots, um, but Baylor, they're the second best team in the country, and it goes to show in this game specifically and in the games prior. And some people want to criticize the path Baylor had. Sure, you can do that. Uh, you can also say that for Houston. You can also kind of say that for Gonzaga. But at the end of the day, it's you have tough, like, they're tough teams in March Madness. I don't care who you're facing up against. Any team, I don't know who said this, but a wise man once said, any team in March Madness can lose anytime, anywhere, which is true. It applies. We'll talk about USC Gonzaga for probably two seconds because Gonzaga, I mean, they won by 20 in this game. In the Elite Eight, you don't win by 20 in the Elite Eight. I don't care who you're facing. Uh, like I said, some people even had USC, they thought they would keep it competitive against Gonzaga. And Gonzaga just blew them out of the water. Like I said, they have so many guys who can score on this team. Putting up 85 points against USC is just absurd. Um, they're going to win the national championship. And it's Mark Few's best squad he's ever had. Best offensive squad he's ever had. No question about it. And I think that it's going to be topped off with a national championship. Knocking on wood for you, Mark Few. So I don't jinx anything. Um, but you got an unreal squad. And for USC, um, a lot of people, you know, were high on this USC squad, and I understood why. I thought they were a little overrated. I thought Oregon was going to beat them. Um, so, whatever. They proved me wrong, but that's not the first time a team in Marshall Madness has proved me wrong. Just look at my bracket, and you'll know that for sure. All right, and this is the game I want to spend the most time on is UCLA and Michigan. Michigan should have won this game. I'm just going to I'm just gonna flat out say that because Michigan had so many chances. Franz Wagner at the end of the game with the wide open three and the air ball. Mike Smith's three looked very good. Oh, Michigan had chances to win the game. The putback after Wagner's miss. And it sucks because UCLA, um, you know, 
I've talked about UCLA and I'll continually talk about them. They are deserving to go to the final four. And look, when they play this Gonzaga squad, I've just, I know I've been saying Gonzaga is going to win the national championship. And I think I'm going to take a guess that the spread is like Gonzaga for six. I'm going to check that and make sure I'm right. But regardless, I would take UCLA maybe to cover. Because this, this UCLA team, it kind of reminds me of the Loyola Chicago squad we saw in 2018. Like, they're a Cinderella-esque team, but they're actually legitimately a very good squad who have beaten very good teams in this tournament. UCLA, I think in the first half, especially is going to keep it close with Gonzaga. I think if we get to um, like the later end of the game, I think that... All right, I, I'm talking too much about my Final Four, but I think UCLA will keep it close. Regardless, let's go back to the UCLA-Michigan game. UCLA is a good squad. Like, I don't want anyone to not think that. And for Michigan, it sucks because they should have won this game. I've said that Juwan Howard, this is his best roster he's had, and it might be his best roster he's had. He's going to have for a while now. And look at the recruiting. He's done a good job recruiting. They have guys coming in. But this was their chance. Um, one of the best teams in the best conference. And UCLA, I mean, they they beat them. So... Got to give props to both teams, but UCLA is going to the Final Four. And I'm kind of glad they did. You know, as the good John Rothstein would say, no one cheers for Goliath. And I was cheering for UCLA and the Bruins in this game because who doesn't like a good underdog story? I know I do. So let's talk a little bit about the Final Four, and then I'll even tell you who I think is going to win it all. So Houston-Baylor. I'm going to go with Houston this game. I know I said Baylor... I think it's the second best team in the country. But Houston, I just... Everything I love about this Houston squad, I love. Because defensively, like I said, what they do on the defensive side of the ball is something that no team can really replicate. And they also have scores in three-point and perimeter shooting. Baylor, obviously, is a better defensive team. I think we can all agree. And you might even argue they're better on the offensive side of the ball. But this Houston squad, I've been loving them. You know, everyone's saying party like it's 1984 when they played against the Georgetown Hoyas in the 1984 championship. 83, they obviously played against uh, NC State, and we all know what happened in those two games. Um, you know, Houston lost both of those games. So, Houston, we're going to see if they can win a national championship this year. Calvin Sampson, they did a little, um, little, I guess story on him during the game. I don't know which game it was. I think it was the Houston Oregon State game. Calvin Sampson's done an unbelievable job of rebuilding this Houston team, getting it to the point where it is now, because obviously, like I said, it's nowhere, or it was nowhere near what it was in 1983, 1984, and he has brought it back to life. I think that these kids understand that Houston, I mean, they, they're, I think they're going to the national championship. I don't know what even I'm going to say now, because I'm just mumbling words, but Houston, I solely believe it's going to go to the national championship. They're so fun. Uh, and the players, they're great. UCLA and Gonzaga. I'm going to go with Gonzaga. I think as the game winds down, it won't really be close. But I think UCLA will keep it close um, in like the first half. Because this UCLA team didn't get to... Um, they didn't get to Final Four as a fluke. I mean, I've already talked about this UCLA squad. I mean, we've already seen what UCLA once was. And, you know, they were obviously this powerhouse of college basketball. And we kind of it's kind of cool to see them back in the Final Four. But I think Gonzaga's going to kind of dominate them in the second half. And I think Gonzaga-Houston's going to be our national championship. And I think that Gonzaga will win this. I actually think that would be kind of a cool final. I think some people... Not some people. I think all people are wanting Baylor Zaga. That's like one of the most anticipated um, national championships kind of all time. But this Houston Gonzaga, I mean, really, realistically, any matchups I think would be cool. Like Houston UCLA. Let's say that happens where this base. I don't think that there's a chance of that happening, but who would win? Because everyone's going to probably say Houston, but UCLA is not a fluke. They would be the lowest seed to ever win a national championship. I'm so excited for Final Four. I know you guys are. I have all of my thoughts on this as the tournament concludes, but thank you guys for watching this um, 
the Sweet 16 Elite Eight edition of my March Madness reaction. So thank you guys. Make sure you're using all ASC promo code MyBookie. Uh, make sure you're following us on Instagram at All Sports Culture. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the YouTube. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later.